Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I have a bit of a confession to make to you all. I'm kind of a sucker for punishment, so I like to force myself to watch bread tubers and their live streams, their videos, like Vosh, Hassan, Destiny. I think it's good for me to kind of keep tabs on what the, the internet commies are talking about, and I just like being angry and, and feeling like I'm really smart when they say stuff that's really, really dumb. As such, I was watching Hassan the other day, and he was talking about that new Helldivers game, and related to that, the Starship Troopers movie, and he had some interesting takes on it, so I'm going to roll that clip for you guys, and then we're going to dive into it. People were defending the movie Starship Troopers as pro-fascist. Yes, I know. guys praising hell divers this is why we're doomed people are missing media literacy they're actually siding with the human beings when they watch starship troopers uh, don't they know that this is fascism these people are evil oh my gosh people are playing hell divers and they're siding with the human beings they should actually be siding with the automatons and the bugs instead humans are actually colonizing these planets and i think one of the funniest parts that um one of the funniest parts of satirizing fascism in this way is to one obviously show that like despite the fact that these are supposed to be presented as evil that there there's still humanity in them some sort of not humanity but like some sort of sentience in them but also both starship troopers and hell divers because it is the same fucking story literally more so center around how fascist militarism unironically kills people it puts people through the fucking meat grinder like, that's the whole point. And people just simply don't understand it. It's like... Like, it's not even about, like, who your enemies are, dumbass. It's about how the powers that... Uh, the powers that control us are forcing you to go through the fucking meat grinder for no reason and ends up killing you. Where you are no longer a human. You are just a number. Okay, so what Hassan is saying here is that people who are on the right wing, who really enjoy this Helldivers game, um, think that the world that exists in this game, and then Starship Troopers as well, thinks that that's a good way to manage the, the society, a good way to, to run things. He's basically saying that they're media illiterate. That is the, the word that's being thrown around, the buzzword that lefties are using. They're saying that the right is media it's not media literate. The right does not understand uh, the, you know, these satires, making fun of them. Um, and so you know, we, we need to have a conversation about media literacy. So what is media literacy? Well, I'm just going to read the Wikipedia definition because it's really pretty basic. Uh, media literacy is an expanded conceptualization of literacy that includes the ability to access and analyze media messages as well as create, reflect, and take action using the power of information and communication to make a difference in the world. So basically, the ability to consume media, uh, to digest it, understand what messages are being presented, uh, maybe what the biases of the person producing the media is, what the angle is, and then being able to create media uh, to get your point across. So it's really, again, it's just the ability to, to read and understand media. So this charge of being media illiterate is being leveled against the right because they like the story of Starship Troopers, or they seem to like Helldivers. Now, I must confess I haven't played Helldivers yet. I uh, stopped playing video games for Lent, so I'm going to pick that up you know, March 31st. But for now, I'm going to focus on Starship Troopers because Hassan makes the claim, and I've heard a lot of people make the claim, that they're basically the same story. It's a very similar form of government, uh, very similar militaristic themes. I mean, you're fighting bugs at the same time right so uh, i'm gonna focus on that because i've seen starship troopers i've read the book um and i actually just watched it yesterday in preparation for this video so i'm gonna focus mostly on the movie because that's the one that people tend to give the charge that it's either pro-fascist or it's actually a satire of fascism and that you just don't understand it um the book is similar but has a pretty distinctly different message the author of the book starship troopers robert heinlein was a uh, avid anti-communist uh, he was a libertarian his book was you know a, an attack on communism he described the bugs as the perfect communists they're supposed to represent communists so that makes it kind of ironic when lefties try to say that starship troopers is anti-fascist propaganda because they're literally the bugs in the story
Now, the director of the Starship Troopers movie, Paul Verhoeven, says that he was trying to make a satire of fascism, American militarism. And so I believe him. I believe that's what he was intending to do. But the case I'm going to make is he didn't do a very good job. So media literacy to leftists typically means that you agree with their talking points, that you agree with whatever they say it's about and the agenda that's being pushed, not necessarily that you actually understand what's being spoken about. At the end of the day, it mostly comes down to snobbery and gatekeeping. They like to pretend that they're smarter than everybody. So they say, oh, you don't actually understand this piece of literature. It's actually really deep. It actually, it's actually making fun of you. you know, so for you liking it, that makes you dumb. Now, an important factor for any piece of media is the accessibility to the reader. It doesn't need to be totally hitting you over the head with the message, but it needs to be relatively obvious what your angle is, right? You shouldn't have to spend an entire 10th grade literature class dissecting a book to understand what it, what it really means. It should be accessible to the average reader or viewer, right? Somebody who's reasonably well read has a basic understanding of history and politics society whatever this is especially important with satire because you're taking something that you're trying to show is bad you're trying to critique but you're presenting it in a positive light now typically you're exaggerating a little bit so that people can kind of understand kind of get the message but if you fail at making people realize that it's satire then you really just end up glorifying whatever it is that you're trying to degrade. A great example of this was the movie that came out a few years ago called Look Who's Back. It was a film adaptation of a book about what if Hitler came back to like 2015 and kind of started on the campaign trail again. And so they dressed somebody up like Hitler and they had him go through Germany and speak to people and candidly interview people and they loved him. They thought he was great. Um, you know, obviously they all thought he was not really Hitler. In the story, he's supposed to be the real Hitler. But, you know, they all loved him. They loved his talking points. And he was so charismatic and so likable that during the screenings, like early screenings of the film, they had to actually go back and add some things of him being just cartoonishly evil because they accidentally made him really sympathetic and really based. So that's an example of how you can accidentally you know, push an agenda that you're not attempting to do if you don't properly walk that line of satire. And that's exactly what I think happened with the Starship Troopers movie, because Verhoeven did a horrible job of portraying fascism in a negative light, or even really portraying the Federation as fascist to begin with. So now we need another definition. What is fascism? Well, it's kind of notoriously hard to pin down, and I think that's by its very nature. I think even fascist writers like Mussolini say that it's kind of difficult to explain but from what i've been able to understand it's basically a authoritarian form of government where the state is of central importance the state is really like the main actor in the lives of everybody uh, the state controls every aspect of people's lives not even necessarily in like a police state way but like the state is involved in healthcare and education and labor and work you know the state covers everything but that's kind of similar to communism, and that's why it's difficult to pin down the definition. I think what sets fascism apart is that fascism at least perceives itself to be spiritual. It sees itself as being the natural state of mankind. It is mankind living within the laws and rules of nature, whereas communism is purely materialist and just sees itself as kind of this final logical conclusion of the evolution of man based on class struggle. The first criticism typically levied at Starship Troopers is that it's militaristic and therefore it's fascist. You know, all states are militaristic. You need military force to project power in order to sustain yourself as a state. The Soviet Union did this, Communist China did this, the United States does this, England did this, you know, everybody does this. So being militaristic really doesn't make you fascist. Another criticism is typically that not everybody's allowed to vote. You need to do some kind of service in order to become a citizen so that you can have voting power. Yeah, and that's true. You have to do some sort of service in the Federation in order to become a citizen to exercise voting power. But I think that the teacher does a really good job of explaining why this is, and there isn't really a good counter argument to this within the movie, which is what you would typically do if you're trying to criticize something. You, why are only citizens allowed to vote? It's a reward. What the Federation gives you for doing federal service. No. No. 
Something given has no value. Look, when you vote, you are exercising political authority. You're using force. And force, my friends, is violence. The supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. Uh, my mother always said violence never solves anything. Really? I wonder what the city fathers of Hiroshima would say about that. You. They probably wouldn't say anything. Hiroshima was destroyed. Correct. Naked force has resolved more issues throughout history than any other factor. The contrary opinion, that violence never solves anything, is wishful thinking at its worst. People who forget that always pay. <laughs> Rico, what's the moral difference, if any, between a civilian and a citizen? A citizen accepts personal responsibility for the safety of the body politic, defending it with his life. A civilian does not. The exact words of the text. But do you understand it? Do you believe it? I don't know. Of course you don't. I doubt anyone here would recognize civic virtue if it reached up and bit you in the ass. You present the argument as to why we are this military dictatorship, and then the characters would learn through the course of the story that that's not really a good thing, and then they have it have a good counter argument by the end of the story. But this doesn't happen in the movie. We're giving an incredibly compelling case as to why citizenship must be earned and why only citizens should be allowed to vote. There's no argument that's made at the end of the movie that we shouldn't be a managed democracy that's actually evil, everybody should have the right to vote, and we should stop being these militaristic bad guys. There's no message like that. It is a wholly pro-human, like pro-federation, you know, we, we defeated the enemy, we're so good. So the media totally fails to make the point that it is supposedly trying to make that fascism's bad, that American militarism's bad, and really it paints it in a very positive light. It shows these people that through their civic system, through their military prowess, are able to conquer the bugs and to protect themselves from this existential extraterrestrial threat. So in Starship Troopers, political power is all about responsibility. And I think that's why the left has such a deep problem with it. They want power without the responsibility that comes with wielding that power. They just want pure, unfettered power, and they think that they can get that by having the masses vote them in by offering free stuff. Now, this idea of citizenship from service is not a new thing. Uh, it goes back to the Roman Empire, where if you served in the military for, I think, a term of 20 or 25 years, you would become a citizen. You'd be able to get into government, you would get a plot of land, you'd be able to vote, you'd have more rights than somebody who is a non-citizen. This idea of universal suffrage is very new. Um, it's only existed in the United States for about a hundred years, you know, give or take. And to my mind, it's not really working because you have people that are totally clueless. They can't even name the basic three branches of government. They can't even pass basic mathematics and they're allowed to vote. Like their vote counts just as much as somebody who really studies and understands history, understands politics, understands economics. So, and so you can just buy their vote. You just offer them stuff and they'll vote for you. I mean, the Greeks figured this out. Plato makes the case of a ship where it's a democracy, where everybody gets equal say. Well, that ship wouldn't work very well. You want somebody who's a well-seasoned captain who understands the ins and outs of captaining a ship to lead. And that's the same thing today. Governance is a skill. It's a skill you have to learn, and to see someone as a good governor, it's something that you have to learn as a skill too. You need to be able to see past the lies, the demagoguery, and to make an educated, well-informed vote on what is going to be done. So what else can be said about the Federation and Starship Troopers? Well, it's accountable. When the invasion of Clendathu goes poorly and they lose 300,000 soldiers, the Sky Marshal steps down, he resigns, and he's replaced by a new Sky Marshal, who is a black woman. So the Federation is racially integrated. Men and women have equal standing, even in the military. They don't even shower separately, they don't bunk separately, because it's such a utopia of gender equality that there's no real fear of misconduct going on. So it's really kind of a paradise. I mean, you would think it's what the left would want. Racially integrated, sexually you know, liberated, and sexually equal. Everyone seems to be reasonably well off. We don't see anything about anybody being like desperately poor. The Federation's a totally global society. Students are talking about how they're going to school in Tokyo or at Harvard, even though they're from Buenos Aires. So everybody seems to have good education opportunities. 
And I think most importantly, you don't even need to be a citizen to do well in the country. Rico's parents are not citizens, and they seem to be very wealthy. They reference going and visiting this beautiful beach planet and paying to send him to Harvard. And they're not citizens. I don't know what exactly it is that his father does, but they, again, they seem to be pretty well off, and they're not citizens. So citizenship does not make you better than everybody, and not being a citizen doesn't seem to make you a second-class citizen or non-citizen. You know, everybody seems to be on a relatively equal playing field. It's just that people who are citizens get to vote and they get to go into politics. And there's a couple of references. It sounds like maybe it's easier to get a license to have children. So that's something that exists in the future, which is a little icky. But, you know, it's a sci-fi futuristic story with who knows how many billions of people on the planet. So some form of population control, I'm sure even the leftists would advocate for. Heck, the government is so accountable that they broadcast the invasion on television. Yeah, they probably were expecting a great victory, but even with defeat, I mean, the people then called for a new Sky Marshal and they got one. So government is responsive, it's accountable. Now, Hassan also makes this point that, you know, fascism puts you into the meat grinder, sends you off to war, doesn't care about you, treats you like a number, and that's supposedly portrayed in the movie. And that's kind of true. During the invasion of Klendathu, that's really kind of that moment where the reality sets in for all these recruits who are starry-eyed and gung-ho, they're ready to go fight. But I don't know if that's really a critique of fascism, maybe versus war in general. Because if you watch any war movie, that's really what happens. The recruits are all excited, they're ready to go, they make first contact. In the movies, they usually get annihilated because, you know, that's how they're building the story. And then they kind of learn and accept they have a crisis but then they they understand war they learn to accept it and they're able to perform in it but verhoven doesn't really take that anywhere they have this horrible encounter on Clendathu. a lot of the recruits in rico's class die and then they're kind of forgotten about and the war continues which maybe you could say is a criticism but then the whole rest of the movie is just like gung-ho let's go let's kill bugs and then they they do they beat the bugs in pretty heroic fashion and everybody's all excited there's a little monologue at the end they're like it wasn't all the weapons and the machines that beat the bugs it was a drill instructor it was a man right so it's even glorifying humanity at the end of the movie like we have all this technology but at the end of the day it's people it's the human being that makes the difference in the conflict see i don't really know where verhoeven was going with that one he he almost had a good anti-war message but Really, he just kind of showed the reality of war and then how soldiers cope with it going through and then how they achieve victory. So, I, you know, again, I don't think that he did a really great job of showing that it's fascist and showing that even if it is fascist, that that's necessarily a bad thing. Because, again, the societies, on the surface at least, what we are shown is basically perfect. It's important to remember, too, that it's the bugs who attacked Earth first. Uh, humanity had encountered the bugs, but they had them in a quarantine zone. They weren't going on their planets. You're shown that the Mormons make some contact, they're trying to proselytize to the bugs, and then they all get eaten. But there isn't really a militaristic expansion into the bugs' territory that would trigger a conflict with them. It's just the bugs who are a hive mind that seeks to expand and grow and consume finds Earth and goes and tries to attack it and colonize it, and so Earth responds. And so that's what the conflict is. It's not this militaristic expansionist, you know, humanity above all, we're going to go conquer the bugs. Like, no, it's a defensive war. If anything, it's democracy at war, which really doesn't look that much different than any other political system while at war. Typically, rights are suspended to a certain degree, even in the United States during wartime. Uh, during World War I, the Sedition Act was passed, and you weren't able to really criticize the government or the war lest you be arrested. Eventually, that was overturned and deemed unconstitutional, but states behave very similarly when they're facing an existential crisis, which is exactly what is happening in Starship Troopers. Militarism, propaganda, uh, commingling of state and private industry, those are all hallmarks of any kind of war economy, whether it's fascist, communist, or democratic. You'll see the exact same thing in all the nations during World War II. Nazi Germany, Soviet Union, United States, huge propaganda campaigns, very deep ties between industry and the government. 
the strong emphasis on militarism, conscription, and a war economy being built. But I wouldn't even really say that Starship Troopers is necessarily democracy at war specifically. Because again, democracy at war is very similar the, to every other kind of system of government when they go to war. So the real political ideology of the Federation is actually realism. Now, when I say realism, I don't mean like they're realistic. I mean like the international relations theory of realism. Okay, so what is realism? Well, this is actually my specific area of study in school, so I could talk about this all day, but I'll read you guys a textbook definition of it just so there's no confusion and so I can kind of stay on track here. So this is the Wikipedia definition, but it's based on John Mersheimer's, who's kind of the father of neorealism. Uh, his assertions of what realism is. So, realism is a school of thought in international relations theory. It is a theoretical framework that views world politics, or in this case, interplanetary politics, as an enduring competition among self-interested states, vying for power and positioning themselves within a global anarchic system, or interplanetary system. Devoid of a centralized authority, it centers on states as rational primary actors navigating a system shaped by power politics, national interests, and a pursuit of security and self-preservation. Does that sound like what's happening with the Federation and the Bugs? They're both self-interested, they're both attempting to expand their territory, and now they've come into conflict with each other. And so when realist states, or really when states, realism is not a... a Realism is not an ideology that you adopt. The premise of realism, the basic assertion, is that it's actually just how the world works and that anything to the contrary is just, uh, cope. It's a theory that tries to explain how states act, not trying to tell them how they should act. So it's not really an ideology more than it's a way of viewing the world and trying to explain why states make decisions. They do these unconsciously but they still do it according to the realist argument. So within the theory of realism, there are five main assumptions that are seen as driving state behavior. That great powers are the main actor in the international system or in the interplanetary system. So you've got the bug hive mind and you've got the Federation. They're the primary actors driving what is happening in the war. Second, all states possess some offensive military capabilities. Obviously the Federation's well equipped but even the bugs are. They're able to launch meteorites from all the way across the galaxy to hit Earth. So the bugs certainly have some pretty sophisticated offensive weaponry. Third, states can never be certain as to what another state is doing. Just like I can never be certain what you're gonna do, even if you tell me something, you could be lying, you could be hiding something, or you may not even really know what you want to do. So there's always a bit of uncertainty, and when there's uncertainty, there's fear, there's mistrust, and there's a preparation for the potential conflict with another person or state. Fourth, state's primary goal is survival. Well, that should be self-evident, even not in context with this movie, but the bugs want to survive and propagate their species. Humanity wants to survive and continue to live. So, you know, that's, that's pretty obvious to me. And five, I'm going to read this one verbatim. States are rational actors capable of coming up with sound strategies that maximize their prospects for survival. Now, we're not necessarily privy to all the plotting and planning within the movie, but, you know, it seems like they're making relatively rational decisions. They went from attacking the home planet, which was far too heavily defended, and they started going into the outer world. They started basically island hopping around Klendathu to try to take out those outposts so that they could move in. So I would say that's rational thinking. The bugs are able to rationally think because they have that brain bug, the hive mind. They're able to set traps. They're able to, to make plans. So you know, both of these actors are, are rational to a certain extent, and they're trying to survive in this anarchic interplanetary system. And now I'm going to make a jump because we don't actually see this in Starship Troopers. I think we see it more in Helldivers, but if you come into contact with another state and they appear to be powerful, what you want to do is you want to maximize your own power and become the hegemon of your area or of the world, and you want to minimize their power as much as possible. And so in the case of the bugs and the automatons in Helldivers, you know, why rationally why wouldn't you engage in conflict with them if you think that you can win because this is a highly intelligent clearly militarily capable species that you know you have no 
way of knowing you have no previous knowledge of. Here on Earth, we all kind of know each other. I mean, we've been dealing with Russia for hundreds of years. We've China's been around for thousands of years. We understand to a certain extent our neighbors, sort of. But even we don't understand fully what they want, and we still get into conflict with them. Look at Ukraine and Russia. They're right next to each other. They know each other very intimately, and they're still in conflict, right? Iran and most of the Middle East, China and Taiwan, the United States and you know, a lot of countries. Just because you know your enemy doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to engage in conflict with them. And so not knowing your enemy, I think, greatly increases your likelihood to get into conflict with them. Especially if you're coming into contact with a intelligent bug or robot species that's an interplanetary empire. You know, if you don't strike first, you may very well be first struck, and you don't want that to happen. So my point is that it's not really fascism in either case, Starship Troopers or in Helldivers. It's really more a presentation of how states really interact with each other, how they perceive each other, and how they try to survive in an anarchic, global, or intergalactic system. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and like, leave a comment down. You know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have an issue with structural neorealism? Or do you think that uh, the Federation should be more, you know, neoliberal and that they should just embrace everybody and just get along with the bugs? Let me know down in the comments. So again, thanks for watching and I will see you guys on the next one.